Hey everyone, Ant-Man and the Wasp had a new trailer come out this week showing off this sequel's fun visual effects, but only the slightest hints at the movie's villains and story. So we're gonna break down where we think this plot of this movie's gonna go based on clues that we found in the trailer. And of course, for a deeper Easter egg breakdown, check out the other video we released earlier this week. But for now, welcome to New Rockstars News, our deep dive into all the biggest Yay. stories this week. So we're also gonna talk about Black Panther and the whole Marvel versus DC war that never ends. We're also gonna discuss us a few other missable details from the Ant-Man trailer that we missed the first time around. Oh. Mm, how did that happen? They were oh. tiny. Too small. Um, we're also going to talk about some other stuff, but I am Eric Voss, and these are my best friends whom I believe only exist in my imagination. Correct. Oh, it is your old pal, Sam. But sure. I'm Philip Molina. I'm the who Bing Bong was based off of. I've been with you your whole life. <laughs> Hopefully you guys can see him too. So let's get started <laughs> with our top story. Uh, the new Ant-Man and the Wasp trailer. Now most of the footage seems focused on the Wasp and her abilities along with a, you know some great visual effects of a building turning into luggage. Um, but not a whole lot of details as to what the actual story of the movie is going to be. But uh, we do know that Scott Lang will be under some kind of house arrest following his kind of treason in Captain America Civil War. But obviously that's not going to last long. The trailer did include a few other plot related clues so let's discuss three components of the ant-man and the wasp plot as we know it as of this moment okay first the villains the trailer briefly showed us two of them uh first there's ghost ghost is a villain from the marvel comics who can become invisible or or intangible and pass through surfaces uh and they can take over electronic devices ghost worked for tony uh, stark's corporate rivals here ghost mm -hmm. is being played by hannah john Kamen. it's cool they're doing a yeah, little gender, a gender, swap. gender yeah. change and yeah. um usually it's, it's a bummer that she won't go up against Iron Man, because like right. it's, right. it's traditionally uh, an Iron Man. Because she's uh, like anti-capitalist. It's like mm -hmm. a like you get like a cool anarchy mm -hmm. vibe. But it could work with Hank Pym too. He owns a company. It's just not as cool. You yeah. know, the same way that uh, Arrow repurposed a lot of Batman villains and stuff. Like I think some uh, rogue galleries are a little better in like. Ant-Man Ant villains yeah. are you know a <laughs> yeah, little, yeah. A little uh, light. I mean, we had a yellow. Ant-Man's villain right. was a good guy it was they just repurposed a different good guy so mm -hmm. so to borrow ghost i think is actually a cold move especially because it's uh related to his powers mm -hmm. essentially like yeah. you know the not the idea of going subatomic but to be a, a, what, what's it called when you can phase shift yeah um well, i think it's called phase it, it, like, shift. Like, like quantum they could deal with the quantum realm so when he gets right. like quantum vibrations yeah, I think that's very cool, though. I think that's like a uh, a good match in capabilities without being the exact same thing, which is one of the only ways that people ever have ideas for villains. It's the same thing, but bad. Mm -hmm. Like, think about Iron Man's mm -hmm. you know, villain with uh, Obadiah saying stuff like that. Well, big, like, right, yeah. right. Yeah, and it's like, well, no, this is different, but can achieve the same thing. Yeah, it so. sounds like um, from the little we were able to gather from the shots uh, that they might be retconning Ghost's origin story to be somewhat similar sure. to like the Pym Industries and, and uh, the same stuff that created Ant-Man created uh, ghosts in this case, but maybe the technology went awry or the pin particles didn't work properly and then had mm -hmm. a different side effect. Like synthetic ones. Like yeah. uh, they, and you got to tease, I think they cut the, the scene, but in the first Ant-Man, some Hydra people like stole some of the pin particles. So maybe, maybe mm -hmm. something went wrong. Yeah. Her like whole, like you, there's a shot of her hand, like, like freaking out. Like kind of like phasing all over the place. That's yeah. gonna be really cool. I like mm -hmm. that. I hope they focus on that and don't also add hacking abilities to it because the character can also do essentially what Cyborg does, yeah. like interface with any electronics and mm -hmm. hack them by touching them. And it's kind of like, well, that d doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like Jamming that, like, just aux it. cables yeah. into computers, it yeah. doesn't yeah. work. Yeah. It <laughs> makes a little less sense than just like the typical hacking in movies, which is just like uh, F -K W Q U F. Yeah. Oh, I'm in. You know? <laughs> <laughs> there, the Main missile frame. sites found. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, there's also another villain who showed up, Sonny Birch. He's played by uh, Walton Goggins. He's like an awesome character actor. Um, Birch was a corporate villain and weapons developer in the comics. He's a colleague of Obadiah Stane. Um, and in the trailer, you can see him briefly um, in a car, and then he shows up in the ferry later. And both of them, uh, both him and Ghost, seem to be in pursuit of Scott Lang, Hope Van Dyne, uh, trying to get their hands on their PIM technology. I think it's safe to assume that a big part of this movie will be um, dealing with Ant-Man's giant contribution of uh, at the Civil War war event uh, going viral in public, and now this PIM technology seems to be a target of other more evil interests. Oh, no. Yeah. We caught that pun. Hey. 
Industry. Giant contribution? Yeah. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. I uh, pimp technologies. Oh. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> it's more subtle. We got it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, really quick. This is Iron Man two, one hundred percent. I uh, first Ant Man. Like most Marvel origin stories are, are Iron Man, but me I check or Iron mm. Man but Spider Man. <laughs> but now yeah. it's it's I it was Iron Man but small, and now it's remember when you had an evil Whiplashy like it's like Iron Man but a little different. It's like you get ghosts, and then you get evil corporate man which is sam rockwell playing justin hammer is like no no now it's walton right. goggins who will always look like a meth head right. to me yeah. <laughs> in, shame my, is in my mind they definitely take iron man's uh format and they repeat it a lot but the part that they don't repeat and i wish they would is is why i think the whole marvel universe worked is if you go back and you watch iron man one it's actually one of the only films in the whole marvel lineup that is such a strong character study mm-hmm. the i mean the entire first like half of that movie is like tony stark in a cave and yeah. that's because they go so into building this character that ends up having the whole Marvel Universe on his back, but they were able to do that because they went to such a deep dive in the character. I don't think that they repeat that part of it enough. No, well, they don't. Yeah. They In a different way, they do that for Captain America with like Winter Soldier. It's just a different format, which is fine. That's what you're supposed to do. That way, we cared about the character finally. But yeah, yeah I totally agree. That's kind of the Hollywood model of like taking what they see working on the surface without uh, wanting to repeat the work that went into it. Because it's not easy to make a movie where a character's look at, looked at in depth and there's a lot of character development that's really hard for a screenwriter to do because you have to put your character in a cave for like a half hour Mm -hmm. but it ends up getting this like to this great place where we all end up loving Robert Downey Jr. in this role Um, I don't know Um, but I I don't know if it's specific to Iron Man this is kind of kind of what we saw in The Dark Knight right like the first movie introduces a character in the world the second movie shows the consequences of what would the world look like if that person were a public figure and what kind of copycat would he inspire and I, I like yeah. it too because of it being now revealed that, the, that this technology exists it's a little different from Iron Man where it was more public this is like this is serious this is very serious like if people were to actually get their hands on this uh, things could go bad very very quickly and I think Ghost is probably going to be an example of that mm-hmm. it's like uh, no physically like someone could be seriously messed up also to improve upon like it is like Iron Man 2 but Iron Man 2 you barely got anything happening in the suits you got War Machine and then Nothing uh, after that. Like, uh, I've been doing the rewatch thing, so you can see my Iron Man 2 breakdown. But uh, in this, it's like Peyton Reed is having as much fun as possible with the shrinking tech, and that makes yeah. me mm-hmm. so happy. They yeah. have so many good gags in this. Yeah. Um, well, let's talk about the uh, quantum realm, right? <laughs> Shall we? <laughs> uh, <laughs> just in general. <laughs> yeah. like. uh, turn off the cameras. We're just going to talk. <laughs> uh, now, this is, of course, the subatomic dimension that Scott slipped into when shrinking down in the first Ant-Man. Uh, it's also where uh, Hank Pym's wife, uh, Janet Van Dyne, that's Hope's mother, uh, disappeared into in that flashback in the 80s when they were disarming the missile. Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer will be playing Janet in this movie. And while she didn't show up in this trailer, the sequel will definitely show the team return to the quantum realm where they will try to find Janet. That much has been confirmed by several members of the cast. That's not something they're trying to hide. We are going to see the quantum realm again. Uh, in the Mar- You got like a tease of it. Sorry, I didn't mean to step yeah. on that, but you got a tease of it in the trailer, right? Um, well, yes. we do see a, uh, I don't know if it's subatomic, but it is a microscopic, seemingly microscopic view of the uh, those little water bears, uh, the tardigrades, tardi- tardigrades uh, which are not totally microscopic. You can see them with the Under naked eye, but yeah. that you can get a clear look at them with a microscope, but that's yeah. not... Sub, that's quantum not realm. subatomic yeah. and that's yeah. not quantum realm. Which, yeah. uh, rewatching that clip from Ant Man, it's not just subatomic. It like goes on the surface of like a nucleus of an atom and just goes deeper, like four or five layers deeper b- beyond that. Uh, it's a really cool part um, of that thing. I, mean, I would be super excited to see it again, which we are. Um, now, in the Marvel comics, the quantum realm is uh, referred to as the microverse. Uh, it's actually a separate universe that contains entire worlds, uh, the, like the star system Subatomica. At one point, Doctor Doom gets mm-hmm. trapped in the microverse and conquers a planet and he shrinks down the Fantastic Four but they end up getting rescued by Ant-Man. Uh, so I don't know, what do you guys think uh, we'll see entire planets and societies in the quantum realm? That might be just one, two many things to happen in this yeah, movie. Yeah, I mean, that yeah. would be the, the movie, right? If, yeah. they, if they did that. I do think that there is something very interesting to the idea. It's kind of like, uh, I was going to compare it to a DC story, but it's actually more fun to compare it to a Rick and Morty story. Yeah, the right? microverse, right? Right, exactly, <laughs> yeah. the microverse. The concept of how do you survive in this thing, and then do you end up, if there is other living stuff, do you end up interacting with it and then ruling over it potentially right, and all right. these things? Um, I think it'd be an interesting thing to explore, but realistically, we got about 90 minutes yeah (laughs) well that's the thing looking at this trailer it was only like a minute 40 seconds and it all seemed to be showing pieces of like one morning 
right? Like there mm-hmm. was like a chase sequence. It was, you see like Scott in his house and then he, there's like a couple scenes that where, where the wasp is fighting people in a kitchen. But like, I feel like that could all be from the first act of the movie. And yeah, I want to see him yeah. just deal with weird people in Subatomica for the rest of the, I, the movie. That's just me personally. I think it'll be a little bit closer to um, the concept, the quantum realm you could equate it to maybe the afterlife. Mm-hmm. And it's the idea of going and getting her dead mom back. Um, and of course you could set a whole movie in the afterlife, like what dreams may come or something, right? Oh yeah. yeah. That could be really interesting. That's just a very different movie. Instead. Mm -hmm. I think it's a little more the, the story. Is it Osiris that, uh, goes down into hell or Orpheus Uh, Orpheus? Sorry. Right. Uh, and, and brings back well, Osiris uh, is an Egyptian one. So right. yeah, he's really uh, brings the world. Back yeah. a loved one or whatever, but just that idea of like having to descend into the afterlife to bring someone back. Yeah. I yeah. think that's definitely going to be a part of this. I just don't think it's going to be the full plot. Yeah. You could also get, because they mentioned, they're like, it's their introduction of the multiverse and then Dr. Strange is going to explain it more. But then this could just be like, once they get that small and you could get like magic elements, you could see mm-hmm. some of like the mechanics of how that works. Which Mainly because like, it doesn't. Yeah. That that sentence that I just said makes zero sense. Like what that means exactly? No, no, no. no. Mm-hmm. It's, like it, tapping you're, you're into not that. Wrong. It, it, it's just confusing. It's the same idea of paranormal activity, not the movie, but the literally paranormal activity <laughs> of, the, <laughs> of that happening. The concept A of things that dimension. we don't understand, yeah. mm-hmm. things that we refer to as magic. It, at a certain point, is it science that we just don't get yet? What's that? Yeah. What's that f- a phrase? It's spooky something at a distance. Spooky action at a distance. It's, it's what they uh, use for spooky white kids. <laughs> <laughs> spooky distance. white kids at a distance. Yeah, <laughs> like, you don't wanna, I don't want you to come over here. <laughs> <laughs> That's the third act of this movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, you could get some fun stuff. But what I meant by that is that you could get like glimpses of the multiverse and like see like other realities once you get like mm-hmm. that far down, which could yeah. be fun. You see the x Well, I, I feel like the, uh, the quantum realm is really the only way to uh, link uh, Ant-Man into this like cosmic event that they're about to have with Infinity War. Cause other than otherwise Maybe Thanos down there. Yeah. You know, uh, some of you suggested when our trailer breakdown, we uh, in the comments, you guys were saying that maybe that's one way uh, jokingly There's Ant-Man a very shrink ones. down inside uh, Thanos's mouth or his, or his, but or something and then like expands and, and blows them apart. I like I the one where yeah. he gets tiny and he goes under the stones and he kind of just pushes them yeah. out. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, like if we don't rat. get that, if we don't, it's me. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Out of yeah. every reference, I love that it's pizza rat. <laughs> yeah. like yeah. it away. <laughs> uh, I just moved into a new house and uh, a squ- I saw a squirrel stealing an avocado. <laughs> no, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I said he earned it. He's tired of paying two dollars a slice. Yeah, exactly. so put on your burger. Style. Yeah. All right. Well, the third story detail is Lawrence Fishburne's character Bill Foster, whom we saw briefly, briefly in the trailer. Um, in the comics, Foster <laughs> is known as that Goliath. Uh, it's the same face as that little girl in the car that like is going. To Disney World. Oh, the meme of the. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, the meme, yeah. 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 Um, well, um, yeah, in the comics, Goliath is a superhero in his own right. Um, in the Civil War comic series, brief spoiler alert for this comic Civil that War came comic. out. Civil War comic that came out 10 years ago. Um, Goliath dies a super tragic death, uh, which is a huge emotional impact on all the characters, especially Tony Stark, who was the one who built the Thor may, clone may, that killed him. May yeah. I? May I? He killed gets him. his chest blown out by uh, evil robot Thor. It is, <laughs> yeah. oh, it is so, it's Mark Millar, and he's the guy who wrote like Ultimate Comics, which is like, let's. what if mm-hmm. Avengers were depressing? And then you read this, <laughs> and it's like, huh, huh, don't, yeah. Don't, don't, the craziest, do best thing about it is that it hold, it's something that comics don't often do, but I love when they do, is hold Hold on to the real world logic. Mm-hmm. So he's in essentially he's the equivalent of giant man in Civil War the movie. He's like that size, uh, except gets killed in in a similar way to the the moment of uh, War Machine going down. Like it mm-hmm. has the same emotional yeah, impact. Yeah. But the thing that happens is now there's a giant body that's just left out on the battlefield that they're like. How do we even bury this thing? Yeah. yeah. So his body stays out there for a long time, and it becomes this whole like tragic thing that his family has to go see because he can't shrink back down. He's dead. And they have to bury yeah. him the size at of, that size. Which, uh, by the way, like this move that wouldn't work in this movie since we invented a thing that just makes anything big or small. Are you gonna so throw you just a, like a disc on it? Yeah. <laughs> as, you're, as you're about to put him in the small hole, you're just like. You throw a little thing and his body shrinks really fast. Yeah. It's like instead Sorry. of a flower or a handful of dirt, you just throw like a pin particle disc, disc on yeah, it. Yeah. Exactly. Um, Correct. Well, it's not totally clear if this movie version of Bill Foster will even be Goliath. He probably will be. Uh, maybe that hero mantle is just something that will be from like his past that he like gave up a long time ago. But we'll see. I don't know. I mean, do you guys see Goliath as the hero becoming part of the MCU? I've got a pitch. 
for what I think could happen and what I would love to happen. Uh, very similar to the way Watchmen plays out. Mm. Watchmen is about two generations of heroes. Yeah. Uh, the the current heroes that we know uh, well, but then that there were some, you know, in the '60s or whatever, and I they f- I feel like they've already established that a little bit with Hank Pym, and you remember how it starts with that uh, John Flattery uh, uh, Howard Stark flashback scene. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, in the previous one, uh, I think in that time period with Janet Van Dyne and stuff, that they could all have been, uh, you know, not quite an Avengers equivalent, but there were a force of of heroes, and so this kind of establishes. To me, I would imagine that they need the people from that time, including Janet, for some reason, mm-hmm. something from that time has come back and now has consequences. Mm. Uh, and so it would link in why he's kind of old, right. um, but also m- maybe, fingers crossed, there's a little bit of an Incredibles thing where it's like, does he still fit in, right, the, yeah. in the outfit or something? <laughs> oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. But I think it'd be cool. And you could get, um, to, not to bring it back but the first story that came to my head was he's also was a part of shield and he helped hank in a way with the ant-man suit and he got as soon as hank got booted he did too and he's like he lost his job so what mm. is he supposed to do so he gets a little jaded and he starts to experiment with trying to recreate pin particles because mm. maybe he didn't create it but he was able to manage it with hank and mm. that's he accidentally makes ghost and so he ends up having cool. to team up with hank and janet as a way of trying to like hey ghost is going to go like nuclear or something like she's freaking out we don't know how to stop her She's using the technology in a bad way. There's some there's some fun stories there. I'd like him to be a good guy. I'd also like to see him be de-aged the way... Uh, I love it. Um, the Michael Douglas. Michael Douglas, was. thank yeah. you so yeah. much. Uh, because it looks so good, and I oh, would like man. to see young Larry yeah. Fishburne... How about young Michelle Pfeiffer, like Batman Returns, Aaron yeah. Michelle Pfeiffer? They're going to yeah. de-age her, too. That'd oh, be so, so cool. cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, I yeah, it, it, you mentioned Watchmen. It kind of was what uh, really helped The Force Awakens, is seeing this old generation with the younger generation mixing and they they were able to bring some of that ethos to the story that way i, I like that in the first ant-man i i'd be it'd be cool to see that in this one i mean the difference is with the force awakens we all like knew those icons from <laughs> no goliath <laughs> was everyone's favorite yeah, yeah when he helped uh, neo save one of the worlds but you know yeah. one one of my favorite diehards you can come at me about this is Die Hard three uh, oh, yeah, it's tired with Avengers, the one with with Sam Jackson. It's a good and, one, and and it's because of the idea of like a guy who's like, I don't really want to do this action movie, <laughs> uh-huh. and I feel like you get that a little bit when you have older characters that get to come in, and it's like, oh no, thank you, and then they're forced to like fight alongside. I love that. So even if we don't know the characters well, just uh, uh, imagine Paul Rudd clashing with like the older generation of heroes and the way they do things. I think yeah. it could be really fun. Also, hit uh, just a side thing. Scott's daughter aged up a lot. Like I just forgot. I just in my head, I know she wasn't an, like an infant. Like, I, but she was so young, and now she's aging up. I'm, it'd be kind of cool. Got a disease. If they, oh, no, <laughs> the Jack, Jack, right? Jack. Oh, no. yeah. Yeah. I love that movie. But uh, if it'd be cool if they stuck with her for a little bit and like waited on a on a third movie. That way, she could maybe be Cassie Lang, the superhero. Which yeah. Would be yeah. Fun, or like a teenage hero which would be kind of a fun element since spider-man's younger you could get yeah. a younger hero too. we're mapping this franchise over the honey i shrunk the kids franchise right, yeah. uh-huh. or the third one's the i blew up the kid or yeah. whatever yeah, <laughs> yeah. i like yeah. that movie too um <laughs> now i got well, a bunch of movies to watch <laughs> um let us know what uh, past movie you want this movie to be <laughs> 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 um but uh yeah yeah we're gonna return to um ant-man and, and other things that we missed um but we'll see more as we learn more about this movie and we'll continue to do uh deep dives and all of it but let's move on to this week's trivia question um and and it looks like they are going to be keeping things Ooh. Ant-Man themed. Uh, funny how that tends to be the pattern, right? Where our lead topic ends up also being the same topic as our trivia question. Your fan so bane. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, so our trivia question is, in the first Ant-Man, what was the name of the PIM Technologies executive whom Darren Cross disgustingly murdered by oh, turning God, him into yeah. a tiny splat of goo? Um, I guess this is the guy who is like challenging Cross, so Cross tried to shrink him with that faulty tech and then splattered him into that gunk. Uh, and then he like wiped him up and flushed him. It was, yeah, that was, was kind of from what cool I remember, moment. it was cool. I thought it was horrifying. I think it's still like the most horrifying death uh, in the MCU uh, from what I can remember. And I don't know how, like, I think, I know we're supposed to see him as a villain, but um, uh, it's like I his death or whatever happened across at the end of that movie was not enough for what he did to that poor noble executive who just didn't trust this technology in yeah, the wrong hands it, and tried to speak up about it. It was super controversial. Do you remember that? That it was like, this is supposed to be 
a like like the funny one because there hadn't really been a funny oh, yeah, uh, Marvel movie at that point. <laughs> and then he just gooed this guy. <laughs> it, was, it was crazy. I yeah. really liked. I mean, I I enjoyed it because I was like, oh, Darren Cross isn't like redeemable really in any way. He just went crazy <laughs> and is, is gooping people. <laughs> I keep thinking of Darren Chris every time we say Darren Cross. Hey, Darren Chris. It's the same. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Gotcha. He sings exactly. He the same. sings. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so gross. Yeah, uh, oh God. A teenage yeah, no. dream. More like a teen. I'm referencing Darren Chris and Glee, and because <laughs> teenage dream, it's otherwise no one would really recognize it. But All right, so we'll get the answer to that. Yeah, we'll get it later end. in the in the cool. show. Our judges will figure out who won, and then the winner will get to do our goodbyes. The loser will have to uh, do some funny stuff during our in other news headlines, et cetera, et cetera. You guys know how this works. But let's uh, we're gonna come back to Ant Man again later this episode. But for now, let's move on. Uh, Black Panther will be coming out in a couple Ooh. weeks, guys. Uh, and while ticket sales are breaking records the movie might be getting caught in a bit of crossfire at of the eternal marvel versus dc war a facebook event titled give black panther a rotten audience score on rotten tomatoes has nearly 2,000 people on board with it. It's created by DCEU fanboys upset with Disney, which owns Marvel. They they say Disney rigged the Rotten Tomatoes scores of movies like Star Wars The Last Jedi, making it seem like they were getting better reviews than they did. They say they like paid off critics. Uh, so I guess these these um, conspiracy theorists are, are planning to take it out on Black Panther's audience score, I guess, to get revenge. And I'm sure that's not the only reason some of them are... Uh, really seen some hate on Black Panther, but I won't get into that. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes bases, of course, its tomato meter score on a compilation of critics' reviews, summarizing each review as generally positive or generally negative, and kind of using that binary combination to commute a, a percentage fresh average score. Uh, now, the website has said in a statement that there was no foul play that happened with The Last Jedi, and they said they're going to take steps to make sure it doesn't happen with Black Panther. Um, now, obviously, this campaign is ridiculous, and I don't think it'll hurt Black Panther at all. Um, it's just kind of like a symbolic protest thing, but I think we can agree that Rotten Tomatoes isn't a terribly accurate way to gauge how good a movie is. Um, it's just crazy to assume that the site itself is anti-DC uh, because they're just basing everything on critics' reviews. Yeah, it's an aggregate. Like, yeah. it, 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 they can't right lean anyway because yeah. they don't come up with the scores they um don't, they don't. but looking at that though I, I do you guys see any possible bias in the way the critics look at the uh this kind of polarization the way they talk about these movies well yes a thousand times yes yeah. a, a, uh, the idea is that a human being gives you their subjective opinion and it is translated to a score which is supposedly objective right mm -hmm. by going to the masses but people, people forget. well, yeah. people choosing to um, be, endeavor to be a film critic, obviously, you know, I mean, if we've done a little bit of like our background uh, research on like learning what it takes to be a film critic, things like that, it attracts a certain type of person with certain type of standards and stuff. There's an inherent bias in the idea of being a film critic, what you consider good. Uh, we've said it a thousand times, but that's why Dark Knight was not nominated for Best Picture, right? It was just like, well, no, but you can't because it's a superhero film. Mm -hmm. So is there inherent bias in terms of critics? Sure. Is that new? No. Mm -hmm. And actually, I think the fact that uh, they share the audience score is brilliant. I actually really love the fact that there is a very different score for, for Star Wars because it kind of just showed you like, Critics might say it's a great film. That doesn't mean as a fan you're going to be in love with it. Uh, it doesn't mean that it's, it's the fan is any more right than the critic either. But the fact that they've gone out of their way to say, like, look, audiences are mixed about it. Critics like it. I mean, that's usually when you go down the list of uh, Oscar uh, contenders for Best Picture. Uh, there's usually one or two that have a pretty low audience score, actually. And it's usually the ones that make you fall asleep. Yeah. Uh, so I think, yes, it's biased, but they do their best that they can. I really like Rotten Tomatoes, actually. So. Mm -hmm. And also, yeah. to be fair, sometimes like there's going to be some bad press behind certain films, and sometimes that will influence people. And, and the way Rotten Tomatoes like gauges it, it, it picks key words out of it. It's not a person sitting down for every single movie that ever comes out and is like, oh, this one's positive. It's actually just looking for things, and then it builds it from there. Again, the website's not being biased. It's just trying to come up with the... The, the streamlined version of trying mm -hmm. to like get this mm -hmm. aggregate score. No, this is the dumb, this is one of the dumbest things I've ever heard in, the, in my entire life. It's so uh, delusional to do this. And I don't know if I'm just shooting myself in the foot with the audience that like watches this. Hopefully you guys are the cool ones that wouldn't ever support something like this. Also, well, yeah, what do you get? Bad gain? movie yeah. to pick uh, <laughs> right. for, for doing right. this 
protest. Do it for Last Jedi if you want to do that. Also, give up on Last Jedi. The movie already made its billion dollars. Right. You lost. And there's no, there's no nothing to fight either. I'm sorry. This is the, this is well, so stupid. Yeah. Do this for Avengers: Infinity War if you want to pick a movie. Black Panther means so much culturally to so many yeah. people that you need to just back off yeah. and pick another thing you, to fight about. You know what other movie made nearly a billion dollars is. Justice League. Yeah. Screw what critics think. Clearly, audiences around the world love this movie. Like, it's not affecting whatever the critics' reviews are. Which I'll, you know, I'll, I'll throw you the smallest bone. I don't think Justice League deserved a forty percent. I mean, I granted that it's again based on binary reviews. If, if critics were just lukewarm on it, sometimes that just counted as a negative review, and maybe that's not fair. But uh, I thought Thor Ragnarok sure was a better movie. Uh, it scored like a 92% on Rotten Tomatoes. Was it 52 percentage points better than Justice League? Maybe not. What does it matter? They both end up making roughly the same hundreds of millions of dollars worldwide. Well, you're, you're picking these battles over the smallest things that, that don't really matter. They still, we, why can't, why not both? Why can't we just have both yeah. these great things that we're in the best time uh, ever to be a fan of comics and superheroes because they're making every possible adaptable story and they're bringing it to screen and they're giving uh, it to great writers and directors and great actors who want to do these things. Mm -hmm. Why do we have to like, why can't we just be satisfied? We yeah. choose both. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. And like yeah. Wonder Woman wasn't torn apart by critics at all. Actually no. everyone across the board loved that movie. So your argument doesn't make any sense. Just as like had mountains of bad press against it. And like whatever you think about that is a different conversation we can have. Y you don't, so talking to the person who made this, group and anyone who's joined it you are not understanding how reality works this is this is kind of pathetic and you need to give up it might be a troll it, oh, 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 if imagine. it's a troll great <laughs> you <laughs> nailed it like that's a great joke i really like yeah. it but if you are actually supporting that genuinely you're missing the point yeah i'm uh, being mean but i think <laughs> bad movie to pick to fight against so yeah what was it you said a couple weeks ago like resolutions for 2018 just like what you like and if you don't like something just Kindly shut, shut up. up. Oh, kindly <laughs> shut up. Yeah. 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 It is the best. Yeah. Yeah. Also, you're humans. You don't need everyone to like the thing that you like. Yeah. Exactly. That's Even my point. Because if you like hurt. it, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Like, great. I'm happy for you. And go watch Black Panther because, or the, that's Black Panther. And watch another Batman movie when it comes yeah. out. I assume everyone watching this will do these things anyway. These movies uh, seem, seem very exciting. Um, all right. Well, let us know what you think down in the comments. Remember, um, but this is New Rockstars News. So, guys, let's move on and return back to Ant Man and the Wasp. Okay, everyone. After New Rockstars broke down, the trailer for Ant-Man and the Wasp recently, upon re-watching it, we realized there were even more super interesting details that we somehow missed the first time. What? So, if you haven't already, go back and watch the breakdown, but here are four additional Easter eggs. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, well first, early on, there's a shot of Pym's new vessel warming up in its lab, and if you look to the right side, you can see a giant Duracell battery. Now, this is probably being used as Pym as uh, an energy source to power his lab, which is uh, probably how he's able to move it portably in that rollaway building. It's just battery powered. Um, I have so many questions yeah. about physics that <laughs> this movie I know would never answer. Yeah, the movie it, doesn't have time for them. No, it doesn't have time for that. <laughs> like, how can Ant-Man punch with the force of a man, but we can pick up a building? It doesn't make any sense. If I threw, if I threw that <laughs> building at somebody, would it feel like a whole building hitting you in the face? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What does, even, question mark? what does it even feel like? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next, there are a lot of shots of Scott and Hope inside a PIM technology equipped van, which uh, can resize with all the contents and passengers inside of that van. And some of you guys pointed out to me that this could be the MCU's version of the Ant Van from the comics. It's a customized van Scott Lang makes for Ant Man security solutions. It uh, basically looks like a Terminator or Exterminator truck. Terminator truck would be very cool. Is that the same one yeah. from Men in Black too, with a giant bug on top? It kind of seems, or from King of the Hill. The, the, yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of good references. Yeah. Um, now uh, for this next one, I feel a little dumb for missing this at first. But when Scott becomes um, the giant man version of himself and looms out of the bay over the ferry, looking down at at Sunny Birch, Birch is clutching that miniaturized rollaway building that we saw Hank shrink down earlier. I know it's a bit obvious. Um, I just, uh, I guess that's what he's after. You know, Pim's entire lab building. I mean, I, I guess if it's that small, why not try to steal the whole thing, right? Um, and then finally, in the close-up of uh, Ghost's hands as she revs her motorcycle, you can 
see a container with some gold colored serum. Oh. Now I'm thinking Ghost could be using the serum to trigger her intangibility, phase shifting, allowing her and perhaps her bike to pass through surfaces and objects during this high speed chase. Now, yeah, uh, you guys are right. Some of these details seem a little silly and practical. A, a blown up battery being used as a generator, a building with a slide out handle and wheels. Uh, does this stuff seem too goofy for you guys? Or would you like to see Ant-Man, uh, the sequel, go more in this direction? I like a grounded Ant-Man. I don't care. They don't yeah. make giant Pez. Is all. I want to eat a giant Pez. I want to know what that's like. I just have I brought it up again. Just can't. Is it? What ha I, it doesn't make sense if like <laughs> if you shrink something, the mass is still there. Okay, if the mass goes somewhere else, we'll accept that. Then its punch shouldn't do anything, right? It should be the effect of if an ant, actual ant, was actually like yanking on you, and that wouldn't do anything. Well, how do they explain in the first movie that like because have the ants, punch if they were made larger, would have like super strength? But that really has to do with like surface tension on a miniaturized scale like ants can lift up to something 30 times their body mm -hmm. weight and yeah so, so shouldn't the building weigh as much hey. as a building yes i'm not a scientist yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah well no it's the same idea yeah, as right. den dense objects like the sun right mm -hmm. the, there or uh, uh the idea that on futurama uh nibbler's poop is weighs as much as a thousand zombies <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's always a good joke uh but uh here's a question for you guys did he build a giant retractable handle with giant wheels and put those on the building? Or did he build the building, shrink it, put those in there, make it big again, and then hide it? I think he built the miniaturized version first because if a building is made of like drywall and steel and all these like wooden things in there, if you were to just like cut out part of it, it's not like a cake that you're going to slice down in the middle and like put like frosting inside. It's like the whole thing's going to start to fall apart if you start to like cut a hole inside of it you're cutting away like a huge chunk of the building I you might as well just build it small you and then seen, like an atrium like they, they just build a building they leave holes and then he shrinks it and then he puts rods through it and then he expands it again i think it'd just be way easier to start with a dollhouse and make it big there you go i mean there's options here i think he built it shrunk it put those in there made yeah. it big again and then he just was waiting if he, waited. if he built a dollhouse, do you think there's like subtlety to the desks in there and stuff? Or do you think they're just like popsicle sticks that are mm. barely glued together? <laughs> Maybe the, f oh, yeah, yeah. There's you drink a out of the Barbie. cup, but it's like solid yeah. on top because it's a Yeah, exactly. Doll like the doors work. Like, <laughs> like yeah, with like you tiny can, tools. You can put in fixtures and furniture and doors after the fact. I think the main layout of it and the different floors and the structural integrity of it was made on, on a small level. And then later on, he, he brought in These stuff. are the questions. And Fine also, lines. what happened to all glassware and rolling chairs as soon as he picked that building up? Right. Yeah. Even if he secured it, that's the, you can't made run it, around with mess. that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> magnets. Magnets. I think magnets How do they is work? The <laughs> These are the questions that drive us. Uh, well, let us know what you think in the comments below. And again, check out our breakdown of all the other stuff you might have missed in the trailer. And a reminder to subscribe to New Rockstars to stay up to date on all the stuff you missed in your favorite Marvel movies. Thanks, everybody. But now it is time to move on to our New Rockstars News Lightning Round. We gotta get somebody to make a sound thing for us. And we just gotta hit him. I'm gonna miss doing... You can still do it. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Um, so you guys uh, tweeted us some questions. I'm I'm gonna fire them at my co-host. I have to answer them as quickly and without hesitation as possible. Are you ready? Yes. Sure. Yes. Okay. For Sam, uh, since Agents of Shield has proven that they don't leave many open threads, how long until we see uh, VJ Nadir again? That's the senator's brother from season four. Um, he says that I know it seems like he died, but according to this guy, at the end of the episode, his dead body went through Terra Genesis at the bottom of the lake. It did I'd say season five seems pretty concrete. I think when they come back, he could be in the second half of this season or season six if they get a season six. <laughs> <laughs> Philip, such a good show. Um, what is the most memorable death so far in Game of Thrones? From at Ask Four Seconds. Go now, go, go. Oberyn Martell. The, yeah. It's a yeah, head yeah, yeah, crush. Yeah. Is that the jelly? 
It's the Jelly. head crush. Yeah, that's the one oh, head when they crush fight and he does it. Uh, yeah. Okay, for me, true, true, true. What movie franchise or series would be your worst nightmare to do a breakdown of? <laughs> for example, if you had to break down all fifteen thousand seasons of CSI, that would be pretty bad. From uh, Juan F J C O. I don't know. Law and Order might be fun to break down. I was gonna say The Walking Dead. <laughs> I knew you were. Yeah. Supernatural. But, uh, I haven't. I, I feel like that'd be fun. I, I mean, really procedurals. Uh, Gunsmoke. I mean, it seems like a real boring western that went on for like. 40 seasons Smallville uh, what about a reality show <laughs> yeah oh. Jersey Shore uh, no, no all the bachelors all bachelor play. bachelor bachelor in paradise oh sure yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, thank you for your questions, everybody. Uh, make sure to tweet us next week um, at New Rock Stars. Look for our tweet about the lightning round and respond to those. So get your tweets on the episode. All right, next up, let's take a look at what we got in the pipeline. We could have sorry, I should have pointed to the shirt, shirt the entire time for lightning oh, round. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, well, next up, let's take a look at what we got in the pipeline for videos coming out on this channel in the next week, guys. On Monday, it's finally happening. Disney and Lucasfilm have announced that they will be releasing a trailer for. Solo, a Star Wars story. Um, I don't know why it's taken this long, but here it is. Um, we're not here it is. Not here. I it was is. excited for <laughs> it. <laughs> here it is. Uh, we might see a thirty-second trailer of it on Sunday, but um, on Good Morning America on Monday, they're gonna uh, show the whole thing. Wow. Um, and of course, we're gonna jump right on it. We're gonna work through the night to make sure you guys get a trailer breakdown um, as soon as possible. Point out everything you missed and talk about what this movie is. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, Sunday is the big game. I think that's all we're allowed, allowed to say. To say yeah, um, it and it sounds like we'll be seeing a few trailers for upcoming properties, actually. Um, a Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, a second trailer for that. Westworld Season 2, um, maybe a couple other trailers. So keep an eye out uh, for trailer breakdowns on, on those big trailers that drop during the big game. Um, and then Sam's got a video I've coming out. I've got next one. Week. I just shot a Thor, the first Thor from 2011, a breakdown for it. Spoilers, that movie does not hold up very well, but there are a bunch of fun Easter eggs, and it's going to be the next installment of my MCU rewatch. I'm very excited. Captain America. America first adventure. I'm watching that this week and doing a breakdown. That's Very exciting. exciting. Yeah. Um, and uh, we definitely have more in the pipeline for Game of Thrones and Walking Dead as well. So uh, for all of you fans of those shows, keep an eye out for those. Uh, but now comes the time for our 15 second shout out where my imaginary friends and I have 15 seconds to shout Bimo, out. Bimo. <laughs> Plug, ramble about anything we want. Sam, why don't you start? Uh, I'm going to do two. You can't stop me. Happy just got a season finale and they're going to get a season two. Go watch that. Also, Black Lightning. The show is mind blowingly awesome. Does it make you question the quality of all the other CW shows? Uh, yes, it does. Okay. It makes it hard to watch some of the other ones, I'm going to yeah. be honest. It's very good. For my 15-second shout-out, I, um, I saw a clip from uh, Jeopardy where the category round was talking football, and the three nerds didn't answer a single one of them right. They just let it expire, time expire. I mean, these are simple ones. That, I mean, I'm not the biggest football fan, but the first one was like, uh, what is an option? Uh, the option play. What is um, a, a safe catch? No. Fair catch. So I wrote it down because I'm like, it was a safe catch. I'm like, it's a fair catch. You know, yeah. maybe let's not hate on them so much. Yeah. I, but the reason I loved it is I related with, with these guys. I'm like, that would probably Alex be me. Because I'd be a bully. I would, well, he, for the last one, he said, because um, they didn't get any of them right, he's like, let's just see the $1,000 clue just for the fun of it. <laughs> kind of a big laugh. It's, it's such a fun classic moment that all nerds can relate to. Cool. And then uh, for my 15 second shout out, I'm going to shout out our intern that we had here, uh, Jacqueline Shin. She's a great intern. She did a great job. Yay! Yay. Uh, and as part of her internship project, we had her make a video in our style. Uh, and it's a I, actually a topic I'm really excited about. It's about disaster artists. And then it's who really is Tommy Wiseau? Because mm -hmm. it's true that we actually have no idea what planet he's from, like yeah. what what he eats, sort of yeah. like where do you get uh, money? What yeah. species is There's he? There's so much yeah. mystery behind this guy, and she dives into a bunch of theories in that video. And so you can check it out on her channel, uh, and also go follow her on Twitter. It's at Shinjanator, which is also her her YouTube handle. Yeah. So, um, uh, so check that video out uh, and thank her for helping us out. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, finally, let us return to the trivia question that we brought up earlier. <laughs> Here's your lightning trivia question. <laughs> I'll sign lightning yeah. trivia answer. Um, so just redistributing the cards here, yeah, and then I'll take that, and you can take mine. Um, okay, so to remind everyone of what it was, in the first Ant-Man, what was the name of the PIM Technologies executive whom Darren Cross disgustingly murdered by turning him into a tiny splat of goo? What do we have? Mm, I have from Philip. 
Mike's dad from Stranger Things. Is it Mr. Wheeler? That is him. Okay, that's why oh, he's familiar. I mean, that's, that's a pretty good. good. That's, mm-hmm. that's All better right. than mine. Uh, Sam wrote, Trim Drankle MD. <laughs> uh, Trim Drankle MD. MD. <laughs> Uh, the I doctor. Messed her up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, you could be a senator and a, do- a CEO, or whatever. CEO, he is. And, well, he turned into that, and then was turned into a toilet. So, yeah. <laughs> trim, drinkle, trim, drinkle, uh, damn. And Eric wrote <laughs> Hank, which I so feel like, like is not Hank. that far from the character's name. No, Hank Pym. He's that's what he's uh, doing. Oh, oh, yeah. Hank. yeah, duh. Uh, trim, drinkle, uh, MD. The answer? Uh, the answer is Frank. <sighs> trim, it's Frank. So it's close. All right. So, Frankel, Frankel, Frank, it's close. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Ant Man caused 9 11. Who's, <laughs> who's the closest? Eric, because it rhymed. Even yeah, though I got the it's exact a character's, person different character's that name. It was. I'll take My it. And yeah, good. it's another character. Who's the furthest? Who's the furthest? I'm not, I'm not, I had a perfect. I'm not the furthest. I got the act. Here's a Shrimp Drinkle. MD. It's a title. Shrimp Drinkle makes us laugh. He went to college, all right? He went to medical school. Don't don't just throw that away. The various judges overruled. It's Shrimp Drinkle. Shrimp Drinkle's the correct answer. Yeah. I'll take that. All right. Okay. Well, so as we mentioned before, uh, as the winner, I will do our goodbyes and, you know, I'm, uh, I'll just do some bit. But um, we're also going to run through our in other news headlines that we didn't have time for. Um, I'm going to read uh, the un- in other news headline and Sam, as a loser, the trivia question, Dr. Tim- Trim Drankel, um, you'll have to be trim. make a joke at the end of each headline to, you know, like cleverly riff on it. That's great because uh, Trim did improv in college, so oh, oh, yeah. the group, undergrad so. or, or med- medical school. Oh, both. <laughs> yeah, okay. The only medical school <laughs> improv group. <laughs> yeah. Funny the bones. Funny bones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Uh, okay, well, no here we go. Friends. In other news, uh, Ryan Johnson said that he told Adam Driver to think about Anakin's expression, uh, Hayden Christensen Anakin's expression, as he became Darth Vader in Revenge of the Sith to inspire Kylo Ren's emotion at the end of The Last Jedi. I kind of wish they just showed him that sand clip over and over again because that's exactly what I thought Kylo Ren was like in that entire movie. Oh, zing! It's, cool. it's rough and it gets oh, everywhere. Rim shot. <laughs> um, number two, a survey showed that 24% of British people know the story of Game of Thrones better than they know the story of the Nativity. <laughs> oh. Sam doesn't know the Nativity. <laughs> What? <laughs> uh, I, but, right, uh, Game of Thrones is my religion. And the thing, thing. Mr. Sim Sim. Uh, number three, a study that analyzed the facial structures of actors concluded that Daniel Craig was the least attractive James uh. Bond. <gasps> What a bird, and he's the least interesting one. A bing bing. Oh, I bing, find him bing. the most boring. I hate oh, all wow. his movies. Except for Casino Royale. Skyfall? I didn't see it. What? No. <laughs> I'm the internet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're the joke. I make the... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Number four. A trailer for the Pokemon animated series Sun and Moon showed the dangerous ultra beast named Buzzswole, a mosquito-like Pokemon sucking the blood out of Snorlax and horrifyingly deflating him. What you got, Sam? <laughs> Hell yeah. I'm actually going to watch this now. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, classic joke. Uh... He uh, had it. Uh, he had it coming. Bing, bing. I'm bing, sorry. Bing. That was rough. I was. I feel really sweaty. I think I wore black today, so you can't see all the sweat in my pants. <laughs> Number five. It's just because you're so buzzwole. Oh, there you yeah. go. A uh, bing, bing. I didn't win. Pornography <laughs> production company Wood Rocket released a trailer for the Rugrats porn parody called uh. Tug Rats, which features Reptar getting a boner. Uh, that I didn't. Sorry, you caught me off guard <laughs> with that last bit. I didn't see this. Uh, um, uh, Tommy's pickle. Uh, Tommy, <laughs> and it goes to Philip. That ding ding, he gets the <laughs> point for that one. Mark it on the board. Mm. I'm the loser for a reason, everybody. Trim Drankle, MD. Follow me on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, um, well. Th- ooh, who should I? Who should I do? Uh, I'm gonna be Tim Trim Drankle. A trim. It's a biblical name. Okay. (laughs) Well, uh, patience. Thank you for watching this week's episode of New Rockstars News. Oh, you, um, you're terminally ill. (laughs) Oh my God. Well, have uh, I heard that before? (laughs) Don't turn me into a splint of goo, please, because I want to thank our ghosts. Our ghosts. (laughs) 
We're going. We're going. We're going. My imaginary ghost friends. Tom Brokaw, by the way, drank his father. In Kuwait, Iraqi aggression has sparked outrage in the Middle Eastern region. Um, okay, so we got oh, Sam Batcher, we got Eric Voss, we got Philip Molina. You almost forgot. Um, <laughs> guys, comment down below and tweet us here at New Rock Stars. Like this video, share it around, subscribe to New Rock Stars for deep dives and all the stuff you love. Guys, see you next week. Bye. 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 We should get trim on the show. <laughs>